All right, everybody, welcome, welcome, welcome to the Sarah Frazier Show. I am so glad to be here. My God, I spent the weekend going to a house that's nominated on Kelly and Ryan's show for like the best Christmas light decorations. And I know what you're thinking. Wow, it's come to that, Sarah. Remember the days when you were out partying and hitting up DC's hottest parties? Well, not anymore. (laughs) Now I am traveling neighborhoods and looking at Christmas lights, America's most decorated house for Kelly and goddamn Ryan with my seven-month-old son. There you go. There you have it. There was my Friday night. So welcome to the show. Let's get right into it because I got a lot to talk about. I want to thank one of our sponsors, Radley Acura. So now's the time to be buying a car, which you might think, is it? It's crazy with the supply chain, but it's the best for you. If you've got a lease or a car that you want to trade in, you can get top dollar right now. That's right. Radley Acura in Falls Church, Virginia wants to buy your lease or your used pre-owned vehicle, however you want to say it. At top dollar, you can even find out and get an appraisal all online. Go to RadleyAcura.com. I love partnering with them. They have brand new inventory coming in nonstop all the time. And now's the time to buy an Acura. Acura is about affordable luxury and safety. Whether you're starting a family, whether you want a sporty ride that also keeps you safe, Radley Acura has got you. They never upcharge. They never price gouge in this crazy time where a lot of people are charging thousands of dollars over MSRP. Why fall for those shenanigans? Hell no. Mm -mm. Now you can go to RadleyAcura.com. And the best part is you don't even have to spend hours at the dealership. Remember in the old days where you had to clear out your entire Sunday to go buy a vehicle? Not anymore. You can actually look at their inventory online. You can get pre-approved. You can find out if you want to finance through them or someone else. You can get a value for your trade-in all there. Just go to RadleyAcura.com. All right, let's get into it. So my husband and I are fighting per usual. I mean, does Schman and I ever really fight? Not really, you know, but I mean, we do, we are currently having an argument over a white elephant gift. I'll tell you about that. Would you rather be with someone hot or intelligent? It's a debate that's going on on Twitter. Vaughn Dutch. Have you watched this documentary on Hulu? Now, this came out over the Thanksgiving break, but I didn't have to, you know, really, I took a break from social media, from podcasting. I'm really trying to be present now that I have a child. Be present with my son. Be present with my family. So I didn't watch any... The only thing I watched was Yellowstone. My mom loves to binge Yellowstone, which I'm I'm not loving this season, I have to be honest. Season four, eh. The first three seasons, I was so in. I was, I was hanging on by a thread. Now I'm like, eh. Seems like they don't really know where to go, so we're just shooting everyone. I mean, have you ever found a town as tiny as Yellowstone where I think they've killed probably like 100 people at this point and somehow like Bill Maher hasn't done a special on it? You know, CNN isn't outraged. I mean, you know, what... Uh, You know, it's like, okay, uh, Fox News isn't doing some sort of thing on it, conspiracy thing. I mean, it's just gotten a little over the top for me is what I'm getting at. So anyhow, I finally watched the Von Dutch, or as I kind of refer to them, Von Douche documentary on Hulu, and it is so good. So thoughts on that. Plus, we got to get caught up on pop culture. You know, Tristan Thompson now is having his third child with third different woman allegedly, although this story looks like it's very, very true. So the latest on that, and then there's actually a petition for Will and Jada Smith to talk, talk to stop talking about their sex lives. You all are, uh, you guys are petty and I love it. <laughs> um, but I did want to say hi, because I'm spending a lot of time growing my TikTok, I am finding that there are new followers here to the podcast. So a little bit about me, um, you know, I just thought, why don't we do three quick things? Okay. Uh, you know, Stevie Wonder's bodyguard told me to get the hell away from him several years ago in a sushi, sushi restaurant in DC. So if that teaches you anything about me, I'll get drunk. And basically approach anyone, all right? So there's a little tidbit if you're new to the show and you're wondering, who the hell is Sarah Frazier? Well, she has a few drinks and she'll go up to any celebrity. Okay, there's one thing. I've also thought about this. You know, I used to be in radio. A lot of you already know this. I I got my following really from a nationally syndicated morning radio show called The Kane Show. Here in D.C., it was on for many years. I was there for like six years. So that's how people really, uh, I got a big following. And it it brought me back to in 2011, when I was on that show, I was ranked as the 200th hottest radio personality in the country out of 200. Okay, what does it say when you come in dead last on a list of hot people? (laughs) Are you still hot or just barely, you know? 
There's a fun fact about me. And then the third one is, and this also probably goes to my craziness and bold, you know, uh, behavior, but um, I met my husband on an airplane. It's true. People love when I tell this story. If you're new to the show, you'll often hear hear me refer to my husband, Dan, as Schman. That was because after several years of being on the radio and then launching the podcast and talking about him in our lives, he goes, oh, I don't want people to know who I am. I, I was like, honey, it's too late for that. People recognize Schman out. They won't say anything to him because some people are actually intimidated. They think he's a huge celebrity. <laughs> what? Schman is the most approachable. He's like a Midwestern guy. This guy is like meat and potatoes only. He's like a pescatarian, you know? You can approach him. So but he goes, so then a fabulous listener came up with Schman. And basically, so so now we call him Schman. But the truth is we will, we've been together nine years coming up this year in 2022, nine years. We've been married two. I can't believe we'll have been married three years next August. It, it's so true when people say time fucking flies. It's nuts. Anyway, so I met him on an airplane. I was sitting next to him. I'd had a few drinks. I thought, this guy has nothing going on. I'll talk to him. He had like four weather apps out because we were experiencing weather delays. And really, we had this great conversation. We all deboarded the plane. We went to an airport bar, the Green Iguana. Okay. <laughs> this is how, you know, some people meet people in Miami looking hot and fabulous. I mean, I met my future husband sitting there at a Green Iguana with like a terrible margarita. My coworker says to me, Mel, she goes, I really like this guy for you. I go, what? Are you kidding? I was so drunk at this time. I, we get back on the plane. We deboard. You know, we land in D.C. I give him one last business card because I had quit the job I was leaving. It had like a coffee stain on it. I was desperately trying to get rid of these. You know, I was giving him out like Tic Tacs. And he like, he emailed me. I didn't even put my cell phone. I'd gone on so many bad dates. I didn't even want to give this guy. I thought this guy's going to be another loser, you know? Anyway. I, he emails me, he puts his cell phone number at the bottom. My girlfriend had to guide me. I I have like, I I don't really have any game either, I guess. At the bottom, so she goes, he wants you to text him. So I texted him and then it was off from there. We went on Christmas break. It was like two or three weeks. We went out to dinner and been together ever since. Well, I mean, I dumped him a few times, but then, you know, we got back together. So So if you're new to the show, I hope this gives you a little bit about my personality. I talk to anybody on this podcast from reality stars to rebels. They're all on the show. I'm obsessed with TLC shows. Thousand Pound Sisters, I can't get enough, you know? So tune in. Brand new episodes Monday and Wednesdays and probably in the new year going Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday with brand new shows and guests. So there you go. You always have something to look forward to on the Sarah Fraser show. Let's talk about the documentary a Von Dutch. Well, it's actually Von Dutch. It's The Curse of Von Dutch on Hulu. It's been out for a couple weeks. If you haven't watched this three-part series, it's so good. Does everyone remember Von Dutch? I, it's so funny because I was a super brand whore in the early aughts, but I don't remember. I don't think I ever owned anything Von Dutch. I really do want to say Von Dutch. Von Dutch. And of course, they were known for their trucker hats. And in the early aughts, Paris Hilton and Nicole... Um, Oh my God, why am I drawing? Nicole Richie, thank you. Uh, were really the people that catapulted them because Von Dutch would allow celebrities to go into their Hollywood store. They could pick out anything they wanted. This is including Whitney Houston. Whitney Houston, her daughter, who was alive at the time, and uh, Bobby Brown went in with some friends. They came out with 30 bags of Von Dutch. Everybody wore everything. Um, and so... They were the ones, they went on The Simple Life and they got their like trucker hats and trucker outlet outfits to be on it. And that's one of the things that really catapult, catapulted Von Dutch. The story is insane. It's definitely cursed. It starts with this guy, Bobby Vaughn and Mike Cassell, who were who ended up buying kind of the rights to Von Dutch, who was an artist in the early, like in the, in the 40s and 50s and really was in that surfer scene, car scene, motorcycle scene. Von Dutch was like a great artist. He's the, he's the guy that kind of invented the whole, some of their looks, the designs, the whole thing. But Bobby Vaughn, Mike Cassell, who are, you know, who are very talented guys, but also hang out with these sort of underworld of people, you know, of, of shady people, right? Um, they buy the brand and they start off. And Bobby Vaughn was like amazing. He he also like ran with great celebrities. He was actually the very first that got um, Tommy Lee and Pamela Anderson to wear the items like on MTV. So they really had started the brand, but it, it wasn't making any money. Mike Cassell, amazing, like an incredible artist as well. 
They're kind of catapulting Von Dutch, right? They're getting like good things going, but they can't figure out how to monetize it. So this other guy ends up coming in, this Dutch guy who was like, he was a gold medalist, um, Tony Sorensen in karate like no one knew who he was he moved to Hollywood he wanted to become like a an actor it didn't really work out so but he from his gold medal winning and I don't know if it was family money they don't really explain he, he's a millionaire when he meets Bobby and Mike Cassell so they end up kind of doing this deal with him where he becomes a partner because they need cash so Tony is a good business person clearly and starts making it a profit but he's also a douche and ends up eventually cutting Mike Cassell out, cutting Bobby Vaughn out, convinces Bobby Vaughn to sign this contract. So Bobby gets like $10,000. Now, the thing about this documentary, I loved it. I absolutely loved it because I had no idea that there was so much drama around Von Dutch, including like this racist manifesto. I was like, what? I never heard of any of this. Now, on Hulu, it's really being sort of marketed or at least it was Thanksgiving week, that it's kind of this like murder mystery because murder is so hot right now. So this guy, Mark Revis, is killed by Bobby Vaughn, who I told you about, who's very good looking, um, you know, schmoozes with a bunch of Hollywood people. And um, Mark Revis is his friend. They grew up together. They kind of got in trouble together. And Mark ends up killing a guy with Bobby's gun and goes to jail and essentially never rats on Bobby, right? So Bobby, for five years, continues to grow Von Dutch. So Bobby feels very indebted to Mark. The way the documentary portrays it, Mark Revis was not a good guy. He he obviously had a ton of issues. Um, you know, I'm sure they were drinking, doing drugs. And he repeatedly kind of starts beating up on, on Bobby. They give a couple of instances. And then one time, they, you know, he completely loses it one night. And essentially like is beating down the door after after punching Bobby unconscious and Bobby has a gun and ends up killing Mark Revis and that's like the big murder and it's like well yeah but Mark Revis really wasn't attached to Von Dutch aside from like threatening Mike Cassell and like you know kind of getting involved because Bobby felt indebted to him you know for this this prison sentence that he did for him you know which I can understand I mean if someone did that for me I'd feel like I owe them forever Bobby ends up killing him, but whatever, you know, whatever it was, okay. Uh, one way or the other, there's an entanglement. They're entangled. So that was the murder that really, I guess, is kind of an extension of the curse of Von Dutch, but I'm sure like a lot of other companies have stories like that. Maybe not every day, but you know. Anyway, the director is Andrew Renzini. It, it's so great. I can't recommend this enough. Even Paris Hilton is in it, which is like a huge deal. She talks about the rise of Von Dutch. I, I'm so curious too. Did you own... Von Dutch, um, any of their clothing, the trucker hats. The trucker hats would sell $45, $85, which was revolutionary. No one used to pay that for like a baseball hat. They were like the first to really do that. Um, they were in like Nordstrom's. They were in all the high-end stores, Fred Siegel. So, you know, Tony ends up cutting out Bobby and Mike, who, who are artistic geniuses. He ends up bringing in this Christian Adagir, and Christian becomes like really he sort of is a designer that then takes um, Von Dutch to like the next level, ends up leaving, started, develops Ed Hardy. And then I'm sure everyone, I completely remember Ed Hardy because I feel like, um, oh my God, I'm going to draw a blank. But who was the reality star from um, John and Kate plus eight? Oh my God, you know, John, um, oh my God, John and Kate plus eight. Um Oh, he would wear Ed Hardy shit everywhere when John and Kate Plus 8 was like John Goslin. Thank you. Google. Um, he would wear it like everywhere. And he sort of also made Ed Hardy, like put them on the map to some degree. A lot of celebrities wore Ed Hardy. And Christian just knew how to replicate what they had done with Von Dutch. So, you know, the the it shows all these things that start to go wrong. They made hundreds of millions of dollars for a couple of years there in like 2005, 2006. Tracy Mills, this guy, he is, his brother was an NBA star. He um, also is the one that starts bringing in a lot of celebrities, um, black celebrities. He's very close with Jay-Z. He brings in Whitney Houston. He brings in all these people. So he also is the one that takes it even further the brand furthers it gets it on you know every celebrity wore their stuff and then of course comes their downfall so what ends up happening they're making hundreds of millions of dollars also they oversaturate it christian the designer is like 
he'll put it on anything. He does all these deals. I mean, it was on Red Bull drinks. They would cross over and do Von Dutch on everything. So at some point, it was no longer unique. Celebrities didn't want to wear it. The brand didn't evolve. But in the meantime, what we end up happening, the guy who was Von Dutch, the artist in the 40s and 50s, we end up finding out someone releases on his deathbed, which was in like the 80s. He writes this like manifesto of how he never, of how he like hates black people, hates Mexicans, hate like it's the most racist thing you know you've ever like in handwriting you know so that comes out tony Sorensen is like yeah actually we were kind of the first um people that were subjected to cancel culture because once that happened a lot of people like started backing away from the brand of course like other corporate places corporate people and in 2010 2011 tony Sorensen, i can't even believe the brand was still around then sells von dutch and I don't even know if Von Dutch still exists now. Great question. So, and then, of course, Christian moves on to uh, do Ed Hardy. Bobby Vaughn ends up doing a settlement with, with Tony because Tony got him to, like, share a shady deal. In the meantime, you know, they, there's this Mark Revis murder. And then the Escobar family somehow gets involved because of Mike Cassell. It's, it's, so, it's so convoluted. And I think it does an amazing job of actually showing that damn, there is a curse. There is totally a curse. And there's a curse in the sense of Von Dutch was, okay, obviously a racist, but also was an artist that did not want to be mainstream. And while the rights to his name and his art were sold, there were a couple people that were purists that really wanted to honor him. But essentially, it takes on a whole nother turn. And then it does seem like, damn, it was cursed by like, like Von Dutch, Lord, he came back and he had his revenge because everybody involved, their lives were like so traumatic, with the exception of Tony Sorensen, who I think makes out really well. Because Christian ends up dying in 2015. Um, so he ends up dying of like, I think of a heart attack or something very young, like 57 years old, 54, 57 years old, the designer that made these brands so hot. Mike Gassell lives in like a trailer in Northern California. Bobby Vaughn seems like he's doing pretty well getting his life back together. I can't recommend this documentary a lot enough. I love a documentary that keeps you going, that keeps you hooked, that makes you think. It does all those things. As I mentioned, Paris Hilton is in it. Um, Tracy Mills is such an influential person. He plays such a key role. That was really good. So it's a must watch. And I had forgot how powerful that brand was. It really, it skyrocketed to huge fame like Justin Bieber fame. It was so good. All right, let me thank a couple of sponsors and then we'll get into some other stories. And I want to know if a test jacuzzi is an inappropriate gift for a secret Santa for your family. Okay, Schman and I are fighting over this. So um, if you're in the D.C. region, you are going to want to head to National Theater starting on tomorrow, which is December 7th, Tuesday. Musical Comedy Heaven. Tootsie the Musical is coming to the National in D.C. It's great. Schman and I plan to go. This production makes for an incredible fun night out, and it's truly hilarious, and I'm looking forward to attending myself, as I mentioned. Who wants to join me? Well, right now, tickets are available. I'm also going to be doing a giveaway on my social media, so be sure to be following at the Sarah Fraser Show. That will be That's probably actually already posted, so go to my Instagram at the Sarah Fraser Show. You could be winning a pair of tickets to go see Tootsie at the National. Um, I will be picking the winners ASAP as well. So it's Tootsie. This laugh out loud love letter to theater tells the story of Michael Dorsey, a talented but difficult actor who struggles to find work until one show stopping act of desperation lands him the role of a lifetime. Playing at the National Theater, as I mentioned, in D.C. starting December 7th through the 12th. You can purchase your tickets by going to their website. Just go to thenationaldc.com. Go and see it. It's a great night out. Thenationaldc.com. And then head to my Instagram at the Sarah Fraser Show. I'm also going to be giving away a pair of tickets that you could be winning this week week. And I have to thank Little Passports. Little Passports is a brand new sponsor to the podcast. Little Passports is amazing. They have educational boxes and toys for children. If you enjoy and love seeing your child learn and explore and develop new skills as I do with my KJ. Well, there's nothing better than that and watching their imagination come to life. And Little Passports offers award-winning play-based kits that fuel curiosity through fun, hands-on activities. Your child will love the feeling of discovering almost as much as you love watching them explore. I got the adorable kit for three to five-year-olds, the early explorers. I'm going to give it to my nephew. The kit ignites their imagination and curiosity with hands-on activities, games, and 
stories that explore the wonders of the world from the deep sea to dinosaurs. It's really cute. It has this little like suitcase and then it has stickers in it and activities. They have them for all different age ranges. For kids five to eight, they have the Science Junior Kit, which unearths new discoveries with activities, investigating everything from how sound works to how rockets launch. Then they even have an addition for children six to 10 years old. As a kid, there's nothing more exciting than connecting to new cultures and places and ideas. And that's what Little Passports does. This holiday, give the young explorer in your life a world of adventure. Get 20% off any new subscription with the promo code TSFS at littlepassports.com. Order by 1220 for Christmas delivery. Free shipping is included. That's littlepassports.com. It's promo code TSFS for 20% off. And you guys, you know the best way to support this show is to frequent my my sponsor. So buy those tickets to Tootsie's to Tootsie at the National and then also check out Little Passports and purchase from them. Absolutely love you guys. Okay, so is the Testa Koozie not a good Secret Santa gift? I thought Secret Santa gifts were supposed to be like funny and like junk stuff and like you like and and like Santa swap. Isn't it supposed to be like a funny gift? My husband and I are fighting because I want to give the test jacuzzi to his family's like secret Santa swap. And he's like, you better put scratch tickets in there because that ain't, and that nobody wants. I'm like, your uncles wouldn't have the best laugh at making fun of a test jacuzzi. If you're not familiar with a test jacuzzi, they, they sent me a free one. And it's a, it's a jacuzzi for your balls. Men put a little water in there. You sink your balls in. You can put a little, you know, uh, relaxing, uh, some essential oils and you put them right in. Anyway, Schman does not think this is, is this a good Secret Santa gift? Leave me a comment on the YouTube. I'm always putting up my videos and shows every single week, new episodes on my YouTube. So tell me if, it, if it, wouldn't you think a testacuzzi, it's like a great gift that gets people laughing. It's different. I mean, what do, what do people want? Like an electric bug swatter killer? No. People want a testacuzzi. It's funny. And then nobody wants it. They want to give it away. Schman thinks if I'm going to do that, I have to bring, like I have to give out some sort of, you know, scratch tickets with it. How about the testacuzzi speaks for itself? Okay, thank you. I agree. <laughs> Two pop culture stories, too, that are like trending that people are talking about nonstop. Tristan Thompson now having a baby with a personal trainer. So, you know, she's asking for child support. I mean, Tristan, you know, there's so many news stories coming out about this. I guess the bottom line is at first I thought that Tristan Thompson had cheated on Chloe with this personal trainer, but it says no. Well, actually, I'm sorry. It says yes. But I think he got her pregnant as Tristan and Chloe were breaking up this summer. Um, so in the meantime, it looks like now this will be the third child that Tristan Thompson has with a different woman. Is anyone else like, does anyone else feel duped? I watched the final season of Keeping Up with the Kardashians and I was completely team like Chloe. And Tristan, they seemed like they were back together. They were working things out. And I was like, you know what? People need to like mind their business. I adore Chloe. I think she's always been the funniest one. She's been the one with the best personality. You know, she obviously talked about on the final season how much her confidence was shook by just a a series of things that had happened. People commenting on her weight, her face, obviously being with Tristan. And I'm like, oh my God, he seemed, and I I guess I'm really angry at him. Didn't he seem really into her? Like what? I I feel like so duped by these shows. Does anyone else? Well, now he's having a kid with personal trainer, Marley Nichols, who is suing him for child support. Uh, And she actually welcomed her baby on Thursday, December 2nd. She's already had, she just had the child, according to Us Weekly. It was previously reported that Thompson, who is 30 years old, and Nichols, 31, had originally spent time together during his 30th birthday celebration in March. At the time, the athlete was still reportedly dating Khloe Kardashian, with whom he shares his three-year-old daughter, True. What the fuck? I mean, but also at the same time, maybe, maybe Khloe's fine with this. Because at his 30th birthday, wouldn't he be hanging out with Khloe? Why was he spending the night with this woman? In court documents, the professional basketball player acknowledged having sex with the trainer several times. He initially ordered genetic testing back in July before filing an amended petition in a Texas court last month. In documents attained by the Daily Mail in December, Nichols was suing Thompson for child support and the professional basketball player acknowledged having sex with the trainer several times. 
She welcomed, uh, Thompson welcomed his first child with ex Jordan Craig. The ex is dated from 2014 until 2016, and Craig learned that she was pregnant shortly after the split. Their son Prince was born in 2016. Wow. In 2016, the Canadian native sparked romance rumors with Khloe Kardashian. A lot of people say that Khloe and Tristan were cheating when he was with this other woman. And the duo announced that they were expecting a baby in December of 2017. Days before the reality star was due to give birth, Thompson was unfaithful with multiple women. The pair initially stayed together after True's birth, but split one year later. That was, of course, the whole Jordan Woods thing. What? God, poor Khloe, the drama. The drama. Well, now he has another one. So uh, apparently they're still co... You know, I would love to know what the truth is. I guess, will we ever know the truth now with the Kardashians? I don't know. And then, of course, you know, um, Kylie and Travis Scott put out a photo shoot, a maternity shoot for a magazine. And they basically say that they've, they've been hanging out for two years, but they're not together. No kidding. She's smart to do that because it's like any guy these women date forget it the next week he's cheating or you know they're losing their marbles it's like one or the other anyway there's that you could also be will and jada i can't believe nearly twenty thousand people have signed a petition for will and jada to stop talking about their sex life you guys are as shady as hell and i love it <laughs> can you imagine because will smith was talking about how when they first met they do it all the time uh and he even threw up from the amount of sex they were having i mean people are done with them I kind of like it. I love all their, I love all their highs and lows. Although I do have to say, I don't know. And you know, I've had, I've had my highs and lows in my marriage already. Not, not really since I've been married, but before there was lots of drama before. And I'm sure if people knew all the drama of my relationship before, well, first of all, I know they tell Schman to leave. They'd be like, bye, leave this crazy bitch. But a change.org petition now has Will and Jada with over 15,000 signatures. It was launched by Dexter Morales in late November, and the petition simply reads, Poor Will Smith, and possibly alludes to the intimate information the couple has shared with the world over the past two years, including details about their bedroom life. Pinkett Smith's previous relationship with August Alsina, you know, he came out and basically said they had a threesome. Well, not they didn't have a threesome. He was with Jada. They were dating, and Will gave his blessing. And then, of course, that prompt a red table talk where Jada essentially admitted, yes, you know, I was with August because I was done with Will Smith. We were done with each other. People are tired of hearing about their relationship. I love hearing about it. I do. These two sound like they're going to be together for life, even though they basically hook up with other people. They've had breaks. It seems like they kind of they do kind of have that open relationship and it works for them. I don't know. I like it. I like her red table talk a lot of the times. I think I think she does a good talk show. I really do. I'm kind of a fan. I don't mind. I love that they spill all their details. I mean, everything. The only thing left that we don't know about is the skid marks in their undies. There you go. Okay, last thing. People are debating if you would rather be with someone hot or intelligent. And uh, this was on Twitter. It was trending. And I I thought this question was so good because I went back and forth. And I thought, you know, I've dated people that are hot and are dumb. And then I've dated intellectual people. And I am very attracted to smart people. It's why I'm with Schman. Schman is so much smarter than I am. He's very, I just love him. He's, he's just diplomatic. He's, he's very forward thinking. He's empathetic. All those, I'm very attracted to Schman's mind, but Schman, I'm also physically attracted to. You can't, you know, have you ever heard anyone wanting to get in Einstein's pants? No. I mean, you know, nobody is looking forward to like doing, like sucking off Einstein. No one, you know, you have to be, you've got to be moderately intelligent and fairly and decent looking. But like I watch Jeopardy. I mean, I, I don't care if these people know what sword Napoleon carried in 1512. They're hideous. I couldn't do them. You know, I mean, Ken Jennings, I'm sorry. You know, I couldn't do doggy style with Ken Jennings, regardless of how much money he won on Jeopardy. But I do say, but I will say, you know, nothing is worse than going out with a hot person. It gets old after a while. It does get old. Their bodies are hot in the bedroom, but they're just so stupid. I don't know. I, you know what? This one's a real, it's it's a mind fuck for me, really. So anyway. Let me know. Um, share the show with someone that has never heard of or listened to the Sarah Fraser show. I would be so grateful. Be sure to be following me on Instagram because I got a great giveaway that I am doing with um, the Tootsie, the musical, which is here in D.C. You could win a pair of tickets or you could buy it from the national DC.com. Bye, everybody. Love ya. Bye.